Hello, this is John, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. In this episode, we'll be covering uh, the basic information you need to get started playing the game. Uh, mostly, this will involve looking at uh, the character menu up here in the top left, uh, but we might get uh, to some other stuff if we have the time. So, here is the screen that shows up when you first start up the game. Uh, it's the terrain map centered on your personal kingdom. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Navara is outlined in a red and yellow um, line here, the borders of Navara. If this isn't clear enough for you, you can go into the Independent Realms map, uh, just like in the character selection screen. And this shows the different Independent Realms. Uh, at this zoom level, uh, you see the county names, but if you go back out enough, uh, you can see the names of the kingdoms themselves. Uh, as you can see, we are surrounded by larger kingdoms. We've got the Umayyad uh, Sultanate to the south, and then Asturias and Aquitaine uh, to the north. All right, so let's zoom in uh, on Navarra a bit. All right, so as I said, uh, this screen, the character screen, you get to by clicking on your portrait in the top left, and it is probably the most important screen in the game. Uh, you'll be going back to this one a lot. Uh, you've got your, your monarch's name here, King Garcia of Navarra, and uh, their dynasty name here. He's of the House Inyaga. Um, there's the house's coat of arms. It's a lion, a pretty cool black and white uh, shield there. Then you get their cultural information, Basque and Catholic. And he is reigning in Pamplona currently. This is all generally flavor. Um, you use your uh, culture and religion uh, to determine whether or not your vassals will like you. But aside from that, uh, you know, it's not likely to change very often. All right. So the most important part of the character screen is this part right here. Uh, this is your character's uh, various stats. I'll go through these one uh, at a time. Um, the stats help you manage your realm. So diplomacy here uh, affects how well you're liked by your vassals and how well you get along with foreign states. Uh, Garcia is not very good at it. Um, Marshall determines uh, your skill in battle how large your levies are. If a character with a high martial skill uh, leads an army, that army will be more effective. Uh, stewardship is an important skill. It uh, affects your tax income, and more importantly, your domain size. Um, if you look up here on the right, uh, you've got uh, domain size. Um, uh, it's got its own special place on this info bar at the top right. Um, Domain, domain is how many individual holdings you can personally control. Um, that's counties and baronies. Um, we'll get to baronies a little later, uh, but they are like sub-counties. Um, the higher your uh, stewardship, the more you can control in your personal domain. If your realm ever gets larger than your personal domain, you have to vassalize uh, other characters so that they can control those uh, holdings directly. Uh, right now, um, Garcia has one vassal, um, the Duke of Aragon, but uh, he's only got one out of seven in his domain, so he could potentially hold a lot more territory personally. Uh, next up is Intrigue. Intrigue is used uh, to both uh, initiate and defend against uh, various plots and dirty tricks. Um, you want to hide intrigue because if you don't, you could potentially get assassinated by your underlings. Uh, it also helps you arrest people and uh, assassinate them if you want to. Uh, learning is the final skill. Uh, it's mostly useful for technological advancement, uh, but uh, if your character is a court chaplain, uh, they can use it to uh, do various religious tasks, like converting heathens and the like. Um, with skills, uh, a rating of 8 or higher is considered acceptable. 
and a rating from 7 or lower is considered poor. So as you can see, Garcia has a couple of decent skills, uh, stewardship and intrigue, but he's not great. Uh, he's pretty mediocre as a ruler. All right, so the next important piece of information is this, this line down here. Uh, this contains various little icons that represent your character's personality and history. Um, so the first one is his education trait. Um, it's in the square box here. There's one education trait for each of the skills, and it's rated from one to four. Uh, looks here like Garcia has the level one martial education. He's a misguided warrior. He's been trained in warfare and the martial arts, but sadly lacks all talent for it. That's pretty bad. Um, so we don't want Garcia educating any of our heirs or anything, because he'll at best teach them to be completely incompetent in the martial arts. Then we have his personality traits. He's temperate, deceitful, humble, and shy. And each of the uh, personality traits has different modifiers to the character's skills. Being shy gives him a penalty to diplomacy. Being humble gives him uh, an extra piety gain per month. We'll get to that later. Uh, deceitful improves his intrigue, but penalizes his diplomacy. And temperate uh, gives him better stewardship. Uh, your personality traits can also de uh, determine how you get along with other characters. Alright, so then this part of the screen is titles. Uh, King Garcia has three titles. He's in control of the Kingdom of Navarra, the Duchy of Navarra, and the County of Navarra. Um, so far, that just means this one territory right here. In this game, all of your troops and money are handled at the county level and below. Um, having higher titles like duchies or kingdoms, uh, they're good for prestige, and you can use them uh, to gain influence over lower-ranked characters, uh, but they don't directly uh, give you any particular wealth or power just for having them. So Kartzia is a king, uh, which means technically he outranks some of these Islamic sheikhs over here, uh, but he's not a very powerful king. Um, okay, so the next up is this bottom tabs here uh, that show the character's uh, relationships. First is his, the family tab. You can see that the computer generated a father for him, but not a mother. That's because we're at the earliest start date. All of the uh, younger generation characters are going to have fathers and mothers. Um, but Garcia is an orphan or something. Some sort of miraculous um, birth from the thigh of King Aneko. Alright, uh, and King Aneko has, uh, has parents himself. Um, a earlier father who's dead, and a mother, age 91, who is still alive. Uh, Garcia also has uh, four children, uh, presumably from a previous wife, uh, because none of them have a mother, either. Uh, and, you know, clicking on someone's portrait takes you to their character screen. So, uh, Prince Fortune here, it's Garcia's heir, then he's got a younger uh, brother, and so, and two daughters, Omeka and Jimena. Uh, and then he's got some siblings who aren't going to be very important because they're old uh, and they uh, don't have any titles or anything. Next tab is the relations tab, but it's pretty em empty at the moment. Uh, he doesn't have any friends, rivals, or lovers, though he does have marriage ties to various characters throughout the various realms. Uh, this vassals tab you'll come back to a lot because your vassals are a very important uh, measure of your power. Um, their opinion is in these boxes here. The higher the opinion, the better. Uh, the more troops and money they'll provide uh, to you when they ask. So um, looks like uh, he is fairly well liked by his vassals. Um, Otsoka, the mayor of Tu. Tudela doesn't like him very much, uh, but we could change that. Uh, and if you hover over an opinion box, it'll show you the factors that determine whether or not uh, a character is liked. 
um, King Garcia is liked uh, uh, because of his long range succession laws uh, and technology, but Otsuka uh, does not like him uh, because Otsuka is envious. Uh, so you click on his character portrait, see that he's an expert diplomat, uh, but he's lustful, deceitful, envious, and diligent. Okay, so the next uh, tab is the court tab. Uh, not as important a tab as you might think. Uh, it just shows everyone who lives in the court of King Garcia. Um, you'll use this if you want to find people to like give titles to and the like, uh, but otherwise it's not too important. Uh, allies is an important tab. Uh, it shows you characters who are allied with yours through marriage, uh, um, marriage ties. Uh, each of their relationships uh, is next to the character's name. Uh, the ones in green mean that you can call upon them as allies in battle. Uh, the ones in red you cannot call upon for various reasons. Uh, it looks like uh, these are all vassals, so you can only call upon their liege as an ally. Uh, the abroad tab, I'll, I'll confess I've never used, but sometimes you send members of your court out on missions to foreign lands and to check out who's there and who's not, uh, you go to the abroad tab. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Garcia's wife. Again, you can up here uh, are people who are important to your main character, uh, your heir and wife. And we click on the wife tab, you see that she's got an additional uh, portrait up here, her liege. Um, Garcia doesn't have a liege because he's the king, he's in charge, but every lower ranked character will. So Garcia's wife uh, is Castilian, which means she's a different culture, uh, but she's Catholic, so they uh, don't hate each other too much. Um, so she's got skills of her own, and your wife's skills are important uh, because half of her skills add to yours. So having a really talented and skilled wife will make you more powerful. Um, the other uh, aspect of marriage that's important in this game is her family ties. See, Queen uh, Leo de Gunda of Navarra is also a princess of Asturias, which means that we have an ally uh, of this kingdom right here, and we may be able to call them into battle. That's good uh, because uh, we wouldn't want to be surrounded by three hostile uh, nations. As it stands, uh, we have our work cut out for us with this tiny kingdom, probably doomed, uh, but we'll see. Uh, Queen Leo de Gunda also has claims. Uh, that means that if you wanted to fight a war on her behalf, she could usurp some of these titles. The Kingdom of Asturias, uh, Kingdom of Castile, Kingdom of Galatia. Uh, we don't want to do that uh, because we have no chance of winning, but uh, if we could get her some titles uh, and they had a son, that son would inherit. Um, but that is something to consider for some other time. Uh, we can also see she has personality traits. Uh, she's envious, content, chaste, and just. Chaste isn't really a, a trait you want in your wife, of course, um, but we may be able to overcome that anyway. See, she is 18 and uh, Garcia is 57, so it, there's a chance that they might still have some kids. Okay. Uh, that is pretty much it for the character screen, uh, except for this one tab here, Ambition, which I'm going to click out of the character screen so I can direct our attention, your attention up here to the top. Uh, these alerts here, uh, which generally give you uh, important information that you need to, to look at right away, uh, although sometimes uh, it's long-term rather than short-term. So we need to pick an Ambition. If you click on one of these circles, it'll take you right to the appropriate tab. So click on the ambition here, and you can choose an ambition, which is like a goal for your character. Uh, choosing an ambition is important uh, because completing an ambition will give your character certain rewards. Like if you amass wealth, uh, we chose amass wealth as a, 
and ambition and King Gartzia got at least 500 gold, he would also permanently gain a point of stewardship. If he became a paragon of virtue, he'd gain a point of learning, a hundred piety, um, and he'd also get, become friends with the Pope. Uh, these other ones, improve martial ability, improve learning ability, improve diplomacy, all have the same reward, a hundred prestige, uh, but they also have an additional effect that while you're pursuing them, uh, you get events that can uh, uh, improve your skills. Uh, you don't usually get skill improving events unless you've got an ambition to improve you. So we're going to improve diplomacy uh, because that is a key trait in surviving as a ruler. And since we're weak, we want to make friends with a lot of people. Uh, once a diplomacy raises to eight, uh, we'll have completed the uh, ambition and we can choose another one. Um, that is pretty much it for this episode of the Crusader Kings 2 walkthrough. Uh, next episode, we will cover du jour territories and the basics of expanding your realm. Uh, so good night, everyone.